Hi, I'm Heather from Arrow. Today we're going to show you how to assemble a Bertha sewing cabinet. Our Bertha cabinets come in three separate colors, oak, white, and cherry. Today I'm going to show you what a finished cherry Bertha cabinet looks like. There are two separate leaf supports to support the leaves on the cabinet. There's also an adjustable quilt leaf in the back that opens up with two legs and then slides to allow you to get support wherever you need it to be. The cabinet also features two doors with storage. It will offer center needle sewing. The opening will support a 60 pound sewing machine and is 24 by 12. Your Bertha cabinet comes in three boxes. To assemble your cabinet, you will need to gather your tools. A standard screwdriver, a power screwdriver is also recommended, mallet or hammer, 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable wrench, a scissors or box knife. In box one, you will find your manual and your hardware bag. Page two of the manual lists all of the hardware. Please note that the screws will be bagged with the parts they go with. Do not separate the screws from these pieces. Locate your bag of cams and connecting bolts. We will now show you how to install the cam. The arrow on the top of the cam should be facing the hole for the connecting bolt. As you place it inside the hole, you may have to tap it in place lightly with your hammer. Here is how to install your connecting bolt. Place it in the connecting bolt hole and screw it down. You will start with your seven wood pieces and 22 cams and connecting bolts, installing as follows. In the cabinet top, which is upside down, six connecting bolts. The back brace, I, four cams. The front panel, G, five cams. The shelf, O, four cams. The back panel H, five cams. Right side panel F, eight connecting bolts, two cams. Left side panel E, eight connecting bolts, two cams. On left side panel E, you will want to locate the bag with the insert hook. Take the insert hook, install it in the inside. Locate the bag containing the door magnets, strike plates, and gold screws. On the front side of front G, you will install the two door magnets. Install the following pieces onto side panel F, the back brace H with the cams facing the inside of the cabinet. After you've inserted it onto the connecting bolt, tighten securely. Your next piece will be front G with the cams facing the rear of the cabinet and the taped edge down. Lastly, we'll put back brace I with the cams facing the rear of the cabinet and the taped edge up. Now we will add shelf O, installing it onto the connecting bolts and tightening. Take your hardware bag containing the large number eight by two and a quarter silver screws. We will be installing them onto the shelf to attach it to the back brace.
With two people supporting the pieces, we have turned the cabinet upside down and we are installing the left side panel. There are eight cams and connecting bolts to be secured. Two of us carefully turned the cabinet right side up and we are now installing the top onto the base we have built. We need to make sure that all of the cams are tightened onto the connecting bolts. Six. Now we will work on assembling the hardware onto the doors J and K. Beginning with the plastic trays, you will need to gather the bag of the 32 number six by one half inch pan head screws, attach the small plastic trays to the pre-drilled holes. The larger tray is always on the bottom. Next we will install the door hinges. Depending upon your cabinet, you will either have door hinge A or door hinge B. On door K, we are going to install part M, which is the door stop, using the three number eight by five inch, eight inch flathead screws located in the same bag where you found the shelf screws. On both of the doors, install a strike plate. This is remaining from the bag that had the door magnets. Now we will work on the leaf supports. First of all, we will attach two panels, R and N, the leaf support hinges. Next, we will gather the bag with the two round magnets and insert the round magnets into the holes, tapping in place with a mallet or a block of wood and a hammer. Lastly, attach the self-sticking rubber tabs, which were found in the same bag as the insert hook. Attach them opposite edge of the round magnet, even with the front and outer edge. Your white cabinet will have white self-stick rubber tabs, and the oak and cherry will have black. Now you will carefully, with two people, tip the cabinet onto its back, open and support the two leaves and roll it completely on its top upside down. Now locate your package containing your carriage bolts, washers and wing nuts so that you can install the airlift upside down. It is going to be attached with the four carriage bolts that you will push through from the back to front. Seat the bolt by tapping it with a hammer and secure with a washer and wing nut. Make sure all four washers and wing nuts are tight. The following instructions will help you level the platform P. You will need the styrofoam from the box, a sheet of cardboard from the box, a 10 millimeter wrench, and adjustable socket wrench. Install platform P into the opening of your cabinet, making sure the pre-drilled holes are facing you. Locate the two metal wings and also the bag containing the eight hex head bolts. Take metal wings and attach them to the airlift carriage using the eight hex nut bolts, four bolts per wing. Attach them loosely as you will tighten them down in a later step. The metal wings are placed on the inside of the airlift carriage flanges facing outward. Once complete, remove the styrofoam from the back of the cabinet. Place cardboard strips around the platform P to keep the platform square. Make sure the platform has clearance on all sides. 
You may also want to make sure that the platform holes are lined up with the holes in the wings. Gather the four number eight by five eighths inch large silver screws from the screw bag and attach the wings to the platform piece. Using a 10 millimeter wrench and adjustable wrench to tighten down the hex nut bolts on the metal wings, have a second person stand on the platform or press it down while tightening to prevent the platform from raising up. We'll now install the caster, so locate the bags containing your casters, a second bag containing the caster clips and caster inserts. Install the caster clip over the holes in the sides of the panels. Tap the caster insert through the hole in the clip and into the board. Now you can install the locking casters to the front of the cabinet, the non-locking casters to the back. Using a small piece of wood or perhaps your cutting board from the kitchen, Place it between the wheels and tap with your hammer to seat the caster into the clip. Using two people, carefully turn cabinet right side up by placing the unit on all four casters. Using the number 8 by 5 8 flat head screws that were in the bag with the leaf support hinges, attach the leaf support to the left and right side panel. Your leaf supports are identified as parts R and N. The round strike plate and number five by half inch screw were located with the round magnets. You will now attach them to the outside of the left and right panel in the pre-drilled hole using a very fine Phillips screwdriver. The doors J and K will be hung using the screws that came with your type of hinges. It is helpful to have two people, one to support the door and lock the casters before you install. Last step on the door is to install the door knobs. Attach the bar to the bottom of quilt panel D using the four screws. Notice there will be two flanges rather than three. From the hardware bag containing the screws, your last four screws are the black one and a half inch Titus screws. They'll be used to attach the quilt leaf extension to the back of the unit. Using two people, screw the black Titus screw through the bracket into the pre-drilled holes on the back side of the Bertha cabinet.